research on visual snow has accelerated a lot over recent years. So when we look at the publications that are on this topic, it's, it's going just up like this. And I hope that they will continue to be like this uh, over the next years so that we really get some more progress. I think the, the reason why this has accelerated so much is that from the beginning we have done proper research. So we have defined criteria, the criteria for visual snow syndrome, they are now now in the, in the uh, International Headache Society criteria, for example, so everybody can read this, everybody has to use the same criteria, and everybody can do now research on it. And in addition, of course, we need to get this information also out to the public. I think this is really crucial to get everybody on board, not only the researchers that are interested, or not only the patient groups, but also the, the societies to understand what, what visual snow actually is and what that means for patients. I would agree that it has definitely evolved in respect to recognition and awareness in, in, the, last, uh, in the last years. We have patients that get um, a direct uh, transfer to our center from their general practitioners and from their neurologists, from their ophthalmologists. There is a lot of more awareness and also within the medical community it is more recognized. During the recruitment for our study I have talked to a lot of um, persons affected by visual snow syndrome and um, I heard a lot of stories about uh, long, long paths to the diagnosis. I think it, this has definitely improved. Now we know that visual snow is actually a syndrome, that there are many, many symptoms involved. We know that it happens in the brain. It is not an eye disorder, for example. It is not imagined by the patient, but it's some, something real. We uh, see EEG patterns, for example. We see other, other methods, and uh, we know a lot uh, how it, it happens. We just don't know yet how we can improve it, how we can modulate uh, the, the disease. So I, I hope that this will be something that uh, will come in the next years and I, I think we are on a good, good way for this. I think we have, uh, we have gained an understanding of the underlying pathophysiology we, with all the imaging studies, with the electrophysiological studies that were conducted. We have understood that it's not one brain region that causes it but that it's um, um, more brain regions that are working together and the disturbance is probably somewhere in their communication. I think with the diagnostic criteria we have like a good foundation to conduct research and um, widen our understanding. I also think that there have been some approaches that have helped improve the quality of life. My hope for in 10 years would be that uh, we have an established treatment program and then of course that we understand the underlying disorder. Probably we will have different subtypes, so some patients uh, will have this subtype, others will have another subtype, and we can then specifically address uh, these, these different subtypes of visual snow. And um, I, I definitely hope that we will have something to offer to, to the patients. Maybe it's a, a pharmacological treatment, maybe it's non-pharmacological treatment, um, as, as the one we are investigating here, or maybe it's something totally new.